Hi, this is Tom, and I'm going to do a quick overview of the new trigger workflow in Storyline 360. You'll find that working with the triggers will be faster and much more intuitive. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I want to show you is that even though the trigger panel and the trigger wizard are going to look different and we have a lot of production improvements to them, essentially working with the triggers is going to be the same. So if you're coming from the older versions of Storyline, uh, to this with the new trigger wizard and the uh, trigger panel. Uh, don't worry, uh, the production process is kind of the same. You just have a lot more uh, production workflow improvements. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So we've got a button here. We've got our character. We're going to do the old standard. Uh, when I click on the button, I want to change the state of the character. And so we've always talked through the triggers. What do I want to do? When do I want to do that? So let's go ahead and open up our trigger wizard. So you can see that up here. So look at my trigger wizard. And of course the trigger wizard looks different because we've updated it, but essentially works the same way. Uh, the key thing here is it looks more modern. It's going to be a lot easier to work with. So let's go ahead and build our basic trigger the old way. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? So I click on here. What do I want to do? You can see it all looks exactly the same in terms of the way it's laid out. The only thing is there's a lot more white space, a lot easier to scan, looks more elegant. So what do I want to do? I want to change the state of what? My character to happy when the user clicks. And again, everything's kind of laid out the same. It just looks a lot more um, modern, I guess, is a good word. So when the user clicks, on button one. So let's read through it. Change the state of character one to happy when the user clicks button one. Trigger wizard looks different, but it works exactly the same way. We hit OK, and then we can see our trigger here. Change the state of character one to happy when the user clicks button one. Doesn't matter if you're in an old version of Storyline, new version here with the trigger wizard. That process is all the same. Let's go ahead and preview this to make sure it's working right. So I'm going to click on the button and it should change the state of the character. So here's our character. I click the happy button. Now the character's happy. She probably just saw the new trigger wizard and she's really excited. So let's go ahead and close this out. And let's look at those production workflows and improvements. So I'm going to go to this slide. This is the tabs interaction. It's a pretty common type of interaction that we build. Let's look at the side panel first and then we'll look at the trigger wizard. So I'm looking at the side panel. A few things you'll notice. Uh, this has got four tabs on it. And when I click on a tab, it's going to change the state of the background and it's going to show a uh, different layer, right? So we can see that change background and show layer. So all of the tabs work the same way. Now you'll notice I have a scroll bar here and that's because I have a lot of things in my side panel. Uh, if I come up here, you'll notice one of the things that we added is this ability to collapse and expand your trigger panel. So uh, I've got my object triggers here. If I've got a lot of things on my side, I can click that. That collapses it. So now I've freed up a lot of space in my trigger panel. And I can isolate that. And let's say I want to just focus on step one. I can expand that and just see the triggers for step one. I can close that and expand step two and just see the triggers for that. So if you have a lot of triggers, a lot going on in your triggers panel. If you collapse them, it's going to make it a lot easier uh, to see what's going on. And you've got that on your player uh, triggers as well. So you can collapse and expand those. And you can do it, do it right here at the uh, trigger level as well or the objects. Now when we look at this particular object, you'll notice that uh, there's a couple things I can do. So I'm changing the state of the background when I click. And I'm showing a layer when I click. Uh, you'll notice as I mouse over these triggers, I've got this little thunderbolt icon here. That's going to allow me to disable a trigger. So I'm going to click on that. And now you can see the triggers there, but we have that strike through. So that indicates to us that that trigger is disabled. And this is really great if you're um, trying to troubleshoot and you're not quite sure if a trigger is causing a problem or not. You, you can disable the trigger, test it out. If that's not the cause, you can re-enable that. In the older version, uh, with the older trigger panel, uh, basically you'd have to delete the trigger and then you have to rebuild the trigger uh, and then delete it and rebuild it. So you're always going through that process here. You can build multiple triggers, test things out, 
disable them, uh, re re uh, enable them, and and use them that way. So it's great for troubleshooting. It's also great for experimenting. Uh, maybe you want to try a few different approaches. There's always multiple ways to do things. And so instead of rebuilding and deleting triggers over and over again, all you have to do is build a trigger, disable it, test it. If it, if you like it, then you can enable. If you don't like it, just keep it disabled or delete it if you want to. So we've got that. So we can enable or disable the triggers. If you want to change the trigger order, you can just click and drag the triggers. You still have your arrow icons here to move them, but you can also click and drag those. And then you'll notice over here, um, as I'm working on the triggers, I've got this inline editing. So in the older version, uh, if I want to edit the triggers, I'm double clicking in here. That opens up the trigger wizard. I make my edits. I hit OK. And then I go to the next one. I double click and make my edits. With this new inline editing feature, you can see if I want to change the state, that's my action. What do I want to do? I want to change the state. But what if I want to show a layer? I can click on this and I can show layer and I never have to go into the trigger wizard. So I can do that a number of times, right? So uh, everything I can change, I can change right here in the trigger and that avoids me having to go in and out of the trigger wizard. So that's a big time saver uh, as well. Now you'll notice on this particular trigger for this or on this step one, we've got two triggers. We're going to change the state of the background and we want to show a layer. But both of those happen when the user clicks. Normally we talk through the triggers, right? What do I want to do? What's the action? And when do I want to do it? What's the event? What's going to trigger that? And so that's how we've been using triggers. Uh, one of the things that you can do in the trigger panel now is you can group them. So right now I'm looking at an action, change state when user clicks. Action, show layer when user clicks. But they're both happening on user clicks. So if I click the group icon here, that's going to group them by the trigger. So now I can see it when the user clicks, what's going to happen? Well, two things happen. It's going to change the state and it's going to show a layer. So by grouping them, I can see what's happening on a particular trigger. This is really great because a lot of times you might have some triggers when you're focusing on just the actions. The triggers may be spread across that panel, but then when you group the triggers, you can see what happens on a specific trigger. So you can, you can view them by trigger and you can view them by action. The other nice thing with viewing them by triggers is that you can make quick edits. So for example, this has changed the state of the background when user clicks. This is show layer when user clicks. If I want to change this to mouse over, I have to click on that. I choose mouse over. And then I come over here, click on that, and I choose mouse over. Um, if I group the triggers though, I can just change it one time. So I'm going to change this back to when user clicks. And it changes for both of those. So when I ungroup them, I can see these are both back to user clicks. So if you have something, you want one trigger and you want to apply that to mul multiple objects, then you can do that quickly when you group the triggers. So that's working with the side panel again. Just a quick overview. We can collapse and expand. Uh, we can click and drag to change the order. We can disable the trigger. We've got inline editing so that avoids having to go in and out of the trigger wizard. And we can group the trigger to see what happens uh, based on the triggers rather than uh, looking at it by the action. Let's go ahead and come into the trigger wizard and see what we have available to us there. So when I click on the trigger wizard, like we saw earlier, it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, the layout's a lot more modern and I think a lot more elegant. It's lots more scannable when you're going through that change the state, you can see uh, the white space. Your eye can make your way down this column uh, a lot easier. One of the things that's really nice about this is I have keyboard shortcuts. So if I click the tab uh, button to start, it's going to take me to this first action. I can use my, my arrow keys and I can quickly go uh, to something. So if I want to change this to uh, jump to slide, I can click there. When I hit tab, that's going to set the jump to slide. And I can, uh, well, actually, I didn't do that right. So let's do that. We're going to come over here, jump to slide. You can see that set that here. And then we can use that. We'll jump to slide. We'll say 2.1. I hit tab and it goes to the next area. And then I can keep tabbing through that. So tabbing the arrow keys is going to make it really fast. But what's even faster 
is if I can type in there. So let's say I've got my when the user clicks, I want to change the trigger. Maybe I want to say when variable changes, I start typing in variable. Or maybe it's a timeline event, I can start typing in timeline. Or maybe it's the media, I can start typing in media so you can see how that works. So this combination of jumping and typing, it's going to be really fast going through there. So uh, when you first get started, obviously, you're probably going to click the drop downs. But the more you're familiar with the trigger wizard, and that's going to happen pretty quickly as you're building courses, the ability to tab and type and use your arrows is going to really speed up your production there. So one last thing I'll show you here with the trigger wizard is the conditions. Let's go ahead and jump to another slide so we can see how that works. So when I look at this slide here, I've got one continue button. And what's going to happen is uh, if I select module one and I click continue, it's going to go to slide one. If I select module two and I click continue, it's going to go to slide two. So this continue button has a condition on it. So if we look at it right now, we're, we see it by action, jump to slide when user clicks. I'm going to group them. So now I can say when the user clicks the continue button, I'm going to jump to slide two, I'm going to jump to slide three, or module one, module two, module three, module four. So that's all going to happen when I click the continue button, but it's only going to happen on a certain condition. So it's only going to happen if module one is selected. It's only going to happen if module two is selected. So if we come into our triggers here, let's ungroup these. Let's go ahead and click on this one and we'll look at the conditions the way it works. So we're going to jump to slide 2.2 when the user clicks continue. If the state of module one is selected, um, what I can do is I can add another condition and we just click on here. And you can see I've got my conditions. So we cleaned up this window. We've got variables, objects, and windows are options. And you can see you've got your objects to select from there. If we go to variables, I can create a new variable. Uh, you'll see all your project variables here. And then we have some built-in variables. We don't expose everything so it doesn't get too cluttered. But you can always come here, click on this, and then you can see all the different uh, project variables available to you, whether you're doing it by ma menu or project. We're going to go back here. And then if you want to create a variable on the fly, you can do that here. Or you can select your project variables that you may have created. Uh, and then uh, the other thing about these conditions that's really nice is I've got the same inline editing, uh, but I can duplicate a condition and then I can change that. So maybe I can say if the state of module one is selected or the state of module two is uh, hover if we wanted to do that. So you can see how it can quickly duplicate a condition and then I can use this inline editing to make quick edits. So when you're working with the trigger wizard, uh, it looks a little bit different, but it's a much more elegant and streamlined process. You've got the keyboard shortcuts and you've got this uh, quick editing uh, in the conditions panel as well. And then on the side panel, you've got all those nice uh, production efficiencies as well. So play around with the new trigger panel. Uh, play around with the workflow. Open up some old projects that may have a lot of triggers on there and see what it looks like. And I think you'll find that you're going to find a lot of production improvements, especially when you start to troubleshoot or you add a lot more complexity to your courses with variables and, and multiple triggers and conditions. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We're always there in the community. Just uh, ask a question and we'll be there to help you.